Number one asks us which point represents the complex number negative three plus two i. So when we're looking at graphing this, um, we're, the real part here um, without the imaginary number or without the i goes on the horizontal axis or moves on the horizontal direction. And then the imaginary part moves in the vertical direction. So we're going to go negative three, which would be to the left three. And then we're going to go a positive two I, which is up two. So then that's going to land us at point A. Number two asks us to match each expression um, to an equivalent expression. So just off to the side, because I see a bunch of different forms of I, I just want to... Um, kind of talk about what i is and when we do more exponents to i. So i, remember, is square root of negative 1. So then i squared, remember, would be this thing squared. So if we had this squared, then the squared and the square root would cancel. So then i squared would just be equal to negative 1. And let me maybe just write... Um, this kind of off to the side. So if we square that, then the squared and the square would cancel and we just get that negative one. So I squared is always equal to negative one. And then I cubed, remember, would be I squared times I. And we already know that I squared is negative one. So really this is equal to negative one times I or just negative I. So i cubed is equal to negative i, and then i to the fourth. So remember, i to the fourth is really i squared times i squared. And i squared is negative 1, so we really have negative 1 times negative 1. So i to the fourth is just 1. And so I'm just going to kind of delete out this middle stuff so we can just see it directly. So i is really just equal to the square root of negative 1, which we'll just call i. So if you ever see i, it just stays. Okay, that's simplified. But i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is 1. And then we could keep going further with these, um, simplifying, but we won't need to in this. So part a, we have 8 times 2i. So you kind of just treat the i like a variable until you get to this. So 8 times 2i is 16i. We see that down here at number 4. So a goes with number 4. Um, b is 16i cubed. So we have 16. And then remember, i cubed is really equal to negative i. So this is 16 times negative i, which is equal to negative 16i. We can pull that negative out front. So that's number 3. Part C um, is 2i to the fourth. So if we wrote this out, we'd have four different 2i's. So we're really going to have, whoops, um, 2 to the fourth, okay, because you're going to have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and we're going to have i to the fourth. So 2 to the fourth is 16, and then i to the fourth is just 1. So we have 16 times 1, or just 16, which is number 2. And then the last one, we have 2i times 8i. So 2 times 8 is 16, and then i times i is i squared. And then remember, i squared is just negative 1, so this is going to be equal to negative 16, which is number 1. Number 3, um, in part A, it says Diego squared a number and got 4. Andre squared a different number and got four. What were the numbers that Diego and Andre squared? So we know if we square a number to get this, then the number that we squared is the square root of that number, either positive or negative. And the square root of four is just two. So Diego um, could have squared two, and in which case Andre would have squared negative two. Two times two is four. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Then in part B, it says um, Jada squared a number and got negative 4. 
Elena squared a different number and got negative four. So they both got negative four squaring different numbers. So again, the number that they squared is the square root of negative four. So we know with that negative, we're getting an imaginary number, okay? Because you can think of it like this. You can think of it as the square root of negative one times the square root of four. Square root of negative one is I and the square root of four is two. And then generally we write the real part first and the imaginary part second. Um, so Jada could have squared um, two I and Elena could have squared negative two I. Number four, find all solutions to the equation. So we know when we have a squared, we'll just square root both sides, and we know that we get a positive and a negative solution. So the square root of one is one, so the answer to this is plus or minus one. To this, um, to this one again, we'll square root both sides, and square root of 13 isn't a nice number, so we'll just leave it as square root 13, remembering that we get a positive square root 13 and a negative square root 13. For part C, okay, again, same thing, but this time we're going to be getting the plus or minus square root of negative 9. So remember that that's going to be plus or minus, and then this is like square root of negative 1 times square root of 9. So then the square root of 9 is just 3, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So the solutions to this will be plus or minus 3i. Um, and then part D, square root again. So we're going to get plus or minus square root of negative 5. And then five, the square root of 5 doesn't simplify, but we can take out for square root of negative 1, um, we can take out an I. So square root of negative 1 is just I, so we'll write it as plus or minus I square root of 5 for the solution for that one. Number five, find the exact solution to each of these equations explain, or explain why there's no solution. So for this first one, when we've got a cube root, to undo the cube root, we will cube both sides, okay? So then this will get us back our inner part. So a plus two equals four times four times four. So four times four is 16 times four is 64. And then we'll subtract two from both sides. So we get that A is equal to 62. Part B, um, we'll want to isolate this cube root first by subtracting 5 from both sides. So then we get the cube root of B equals negative 1. And that's fine. We can have an odd root being equal to a negative number. So here we'll just cube both sides now. And um, so then we get B equals, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, and then times negative 1 again gives us negative 1, so b is equal to negative 1. And then part c, so again we'll isolate that root by adding 14 to both sides, so we get the cube root of c minus 1, and then negative 14 and 14 is 0, equals negative 4 plus 14, which is 10. So then to get rid of the cube root, we'll cube both sides. So then we end up with C minus 1 equals 10 times 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 again is 1,000. Then we'll add 1 to both sides to get C by itself, and we get that C equals 1,001. Number six, explain how you know that the square root of negative one is not a negative number. So remember that the definition of a square root is what number times itself gives you this inner number. And anytime we take a number times itself, that's always going to be a positive number. Okay, you can never, because if you do a negative times a negative, that's a positive. And if you do a positive times a positive, that's a positive. So your square root can never be a negative number because a number times itself is always positive. 